And these story problems are about equal groups. And if you see an equal group problem there, like I said, there were 10, a carton is a group of 12 eggs, and you have 15 cartons there. That's what type of problem you're probably going to be doing there. How many eggs in all? Keith Stewart says it is probably a... Work with me here. Yes, multiplication. It's a multiplication pattern problem. But just because it's a multiplication pattern does not mean that you'll do multiplication necessarily to solve it. Uh, but here is the basic garden variety. Um, when you see a multiplication <coughs> equal group problem, they usually look like this. If you take the number in each group, hashtag, number in each group, and you multiply it by the number of groups, guess what you'll get? The total. Correct? Here is an example sort of problem. Um, in the school, there were 232 seventh graders. In the school, there were 232 seventh graders. in eight classrooms. How many students should be in each classroom? If you're dividing it up evenly, how many would be in each classroom? Now, the thing, the problem, whatever arises here is not always in story problems do they use words, use the exact word group. But you have to figure out what word in the story problem is a group of something. So if I'm looking at this thing in the school, we have 232 seventh graders in eighth grade classrooms. How many should be in each classroom? Let's look at all the nouns there. We've got school, right? That's a noun. There's seventh graders, that's a noun. Classrooms is a noun. And classrooms is a noun, I guess. Which one of those nouns is a group of something? Actually, two of them could be, but school would be a group of students, I suppose. But we're not asked to find how many schools there are. Brooklyn? Seventh graders. Seventh graders are a group of what? Students. Seventh graders. <laughs> a group of people. Or a seventh grader. A seventh grader is a group seventh of her people. Seventh graders. Seventh graders <laughs> are a group, but they are not groups of something. Mm -hmm. I see where you're going from, and I know it's a little confusing, but I think you'll see it soon as we talk about it. Here, here, if I have a seventh grader, here's my seventh grader. He is a group of what? You put, are you putting something inside of the seventh grader? Like he's a dozen eggs? Like a cart is a dozen eggs, a seventh grader is a group of... Now you could say he's a group of limbs, but we're not talking about limbs or phalanges or metacarpals or carpals or anything there. Jenna? Classroom is a group of... A, cl a classroom in a classroom is a group of kids. In this case, in the classroom, it's a group of seventh graders in a classroom. A classroom is a bunch of seventh graders, put it there. Unless it's empty. Unless it's empty, yes. So, instead of the word group, in this case, we're going to put the word classroom. So, we need to know the number in each classroom. 
number in each classroom times the number of classrooms. Yeah, that looks three dimensional. Isn't it? Is that what I meant? You don't care. <laughs> equals the total number of students. Now, which of those do I know? Do I know how many seventh graders are in each classroom? Do I know how many classrooms I have? Do I know how many total seventh graders I have? Which of those three do I know? Jaden, I know what? How many classrooms are there? So there's an eight that goes here. Now, do I know how many seventh graders are in each classroom, or do I don't know how many total seventh graders there are? Jaden, which is 232, right? I don't know how many seventh graders are in each room there. So here's the pattern that you use. What number times 8 gives me 232? And like I said, just because it's a multiplication pattern doesn't mean it's multiplication to solve it. What would I do in this case? What's the first thing I do when I have a missing number problem? I keep. Yeah, let's go 6 times 2 is 12. If I'm missing the top. What do I do with these two to get 12? Oh, I'm sorry. If I'm missing 6, what do I do with 2 and 12 to get 6? So I'm going to divide. So I'm going to take 232 and divide it, which gives me what? 8 goes into that, what, 2 times? 16. It goes into 72, nine times. There are 29 seventh graders in each classroom. And that's kind of the thought process. Many of you say, well, that's really hard compared to how I could have just thrown down numbers. My job is to teach you how to think, people. Now, here comes a real tricky one. This one right out of the book. Marcy collected $4.50. Let's change her name to something simple. Let's go Macy. What did I say she did? She collected $4.50. Oh boy. Collected $4. I don't like it here. I'm going to go down here. $4.50. She collected $4.50. Selling lemonade at 25 cents. Selling lemonade, lemonada, for 25 cents. 25 cents a cup. A cup. How? many cups did she sell? Is that the question? How many cups did she sell? Okay, so thinking about the problem, the number in each group times the number of groups equals total. And I'm going to guess I'll be lucky if three of you in this whole classroom get it right when I ask you, what is a group of something there? What word there is synonymous with a group? Here's where what we call abstract thinking comes into play. Think about the nouns. Maybe a lemonade is a group of water, but we're not really talking about how much water in that, so that's probably not going to be the legitimate thing there. What is a group of what? A group of what? Isabel! Negatory. Put your clothes, I guess. Riley, what? cup is a group of what? Is a group of lemonade? No. Cup is not a group of lemonade. Jaden? Cup is a group of money? Cup is a group of cents. Every cup is 25 cents. You get this group of money for every cup. So the question is, the number in each group, do I know how many groups? Do I know how much is in each cup? 
How much money do you get for each cup? 25 cents. So 25 cents. Great. 25 cents times, do I know how many cups I sold? I don't. That's my letter C. Do I know how much total I have? Now here's something you have to watch out in math. I can't put cents in one place and dollars in the other. So I either need to make them all both cents or both dollars. So rather than putting $4.50, I'm going to put 450 cents. Otherwise, I have to work with the decimal up here. So again, this is just like that other problem. If you're missing the middle one on a multiplication problem, 7 times 2 is 14. If I'm missing the middle, what happens? I have to divide those two. So 450 divided by 25 is what, 18? I hope. 18 cups. A cup is a group of cents. Yes, there's lemonade in there, but people are not giving you lemonade. They're giving you 25 cents for every cup there. Well, that was pretty much as exciting as it gets. Is.